Welcome, Vadim is here, and today I'll walk you through key things you need to understand. If the video was helpful, please like and subscribe. Let me show you how to rewind changes when update broke your PC, and we'll use System Restore and Uninstall Updates feature from the Windows 11 recovery menu. To get into Windows recovery mode, you need to hold the Shift button during the boot process. Inside Windows recovery environment, we need to navigate Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, and then select System Restore. Here in this menu, you see all restore points created before Windows update started. There is a little checkbox here that shows a more restored point from previous updates. If you know which update is causing the issue, you need to select this update, click Next, and complete the restore. Hopefully System Restore helps you, but if it doesn't, you need to proceed and reset this PC or use an in-place repair next. Let me share with you how to disable Windows 11 startup apps to stop unneeded apps from auto-starting and slowing your day. To start disabling the apps, you need to open Task Manager and select Startup Apps. To do this, right-click on the taskbar and select Task Manager. Here on the left, select Startup Apps and expand the window. So the million-dollar question here is how to decide what to disable. Let me show you the quick trick first and then I'll explain in details how to do the analysis. The easiest thing to do here is sort by Startup Impact. You see that two tools here have high impact on Startup two tools have low impact, some not measured, and some have no impact. For example, if you're not using OneNote, you can just select it here, right mouse click, and click Disable. Keep in mind, you can always launch it manually when needed. So how do you decide what to disable? There are three important categories I would emphasize. Safe to disable, do not disable, and some app may fall into third category, where you're unsure. Let's look at each category in more details. Some apps are safe to disable. They're convenience apps, like chats, cloud sync, tray utility, or helpers. You don't need them immediately once you sign in. They just add themselves as part of install process. Second category is do not disable. I would add into this category security antivirus, core Windows services, drivers, or virtualization tools. For example, into the first category, I would add OneNote and OneDrive, as well as Copilot. And into the second category, I would add Microsoft Defender and Windows Security Health Systray. This brings us to the third unsure category. This is where we need to disable one item at a time and reboot, just to confirm we didn't do something wrong. One item that might fall into this category is Mobile Devices Microsoft Windows. This is the device pairing transfer service. If you don't need to connect phones or tablets or use nearby features, you can disable it. Otherwise, keep it enabled. Let's wrap up. The key benefits of disabling startup apps are improved performance, enhanced stability, and it gives you full control. Improved performance means faster login and the snappier first minute. Enhanced stability means reducing possibility of something crashing. And you are in control. You decide what's always on versus what launches only when you need it. Let me share with you how to reset your Windows 11 PC without losing your personal files. I'll show you how to reset this PC and avoid safe mode loops afterward, as well as two different reinstall methods, cloud download reinstall or local reinstall. To start the reinstall process, you need to navigate to Settings, System, and Recovery. Here, you need to click on the Reset PC button. I'll choose the option Keep My Files, because that's obviously your preference too. Here, you have two choices, Cloud Download versus Local Reinstall, and you need to select carefully based on your circumstances. Cloud Download pulls fresh files from Microsoft over the Internet, often fixing deeper corruptions and installing more up-to-date build, but it uses more data, uses Internet, and takes longer. Local Reinstall, the alternative, uses the recovery image already on your PC, which was created as part of Windows installation. Local Reinstall is faster, it works offline, but if that image is damaged or outdated, you may reintroduce issue and need a big round of updates afterwards. I will choose Cloud Download because it fits best my circumstances, but obviously you need to select what's best for you. One important tip here that might help you. If Reset fails to start, install the latest cumulative Windows updates or use in-place repair from ISO file. I'm ready to click the reset button, but I want to share with you one last important point. Because the changes you make are irreversible, you need to understand which personal files are kept on your PC. Windows will keep all the files located under your profile. If you go to Drive C in Windows Explorer and then select Users folder, you will see all the users on this computer, and all the files under the particular user will be kept, which includes desktop, documents, downloads, pictures, music, and videos. Windows Reset also preserves other library folders and locally synced OneDrive items. It does not keep any installed apps, 
and it does not keep most of the system or settings changes. Let me share with you how to enter Windows Safe Mode without the desktop by holding Windows Shift button. To enter Windows Safe Mode without Windows Desktop, power on your PC or restart Windows and hold the Shift button at the same time. Keep in mind that if Windows fails to load, it still gets you to the same menu. To enter Windows Safe Mode from the recovery environment, you need to select Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, Startup Settings and then click Restart. Here you need to select between options 4, 5 and 6 to enter Windows Safe Mode. Here's the trick. If Windows fails to boot three times, it will automatically trigger Windows recovery environment. And another important point. If keys on your keyboard are not detected, make sure to plug in wired keyboard or use another USB port. Let me share with you how to select the best Windows 11 safe mode for troubleshooting. Windows 11 provides three different options. Option 4 safe mode, option 5 safe mode with networking and option 6 safe mode with command prompt. Option 4 safe mode is used for general fixes and display issues. You can use option 5 safe mode with networking when you need internet or drivers or prefer ethernet and you use option 6 safe mode with command prompt when the shell is unstable or you are planning to run repair commands. One important point to mention is sometimes instead of number keys you might see function keys listed F4, F5 or F6 instead of numbers. To enter Windows Safe Mode from Desktop you need to navigate Start button, Settings, System and then Recovery. Inside System Recovery you need to navigate to Recovery Options, select Advanced Startup and click Restart Now. This blue menu is called Windows Recovery Mode. To enter Safe Mode from the Recovery Mode you need to click Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, Startup Settings and then click Restart. Here you need to select between options 4, 5 and 6 to enter Windows Safe Mode. Let me share with you how to fix Windows corrupted files using command line. To launch Windows Command Prompt you navigate to Startup menu, type CMD and select Run as Administrator. If you need to enlarge the font size in Command Prompt you click in the upper right corner, select Properties, select Font and then select the larger font size. In the first step I am going to check the health of the Windows drive and for that I am going to use DISM command with online switch, cleanup image switch and then check health switch. This command with this combination of switches quickly checks whether the Windows component store is flagged as corrupted so you know if deeper repair is needed. In my case the component store was marked as repairable so I am going to proceed to the next step. In the next step I am going to run the same DISM command but with the scan health switch. This command runs a thorough scan of the component store to identify and log any corruption before attempting fixes. In the third step I am going to run DISM command but with the restore health switch. This helps repair component store by replacing damaged components using Windows Update as a source. This way SFC has good files to pull from. You can also use SFC slash scan now command. This command verifies all protected system files and replaces any corrupted files from now healthy component store to stabilize Windows. And finally you can run check disks on drive C with the slash scan option. This performs a fast online check of the disk's file system metadata to catch issues that can cause corruption, recommending slash F or slash R later if fixes are required. And if you want to go deeper on the topic, make sure to watch this video next.